May God bless every one of you. We continue, beloved, in our study of the word of the Lord. And today it corresponds for us to study the second book of the, the second chapter of the second book of Kings. And we're going to talk about Elijah and his ascension into heaven. And we're going to see about his uh, ascension and what that means for us. And we're going to be reading in verse 1. And it says, And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Verse 3, Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. We'll read up until there for now. Here Elijah ascends to heaven. He was conscious that he, he was conscious that he was leaving. The Lord had told him already. How is it that only how is it that not only Elijah knew about his soon uh, going away. Elisha knew it. The sons of the prophets knew it. Considering that Elijah's ascension is a type of the ascension of the church or of the rapture of the bride, which is the church, we can think that Elijah and all of those who await for this to happen, we are conscious that we are leaving. Some will live knowing this. Because we ask and we say, how many of you know that Christ is coming? And I assure you that the Christians are going to raise their hands. And so some will live knowing, but they will not be conscious of the closeness of this happening. And they will ignore the signs. Now the sons of the prophets were conscious. Are you conscious that we are soon leaving? Are you conscious that... Our leaving is imminent, that Christ is coming very soon. Elijah tests his disciple, sending them to stay in certain places. First, he tells them to stay in Gilgal. Look here. Then in Bethel, and lastly in Jericho, as we just read. But he responds on the three occasions, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. Elisha was not going to leave his teacher until the Lord would take him away. What do we see here in the successor of Elijah? When Elijah was called and we're going to see, or Elisha was called, we're going to talk about it next week. And we're going to talk about the ministry of Elisha. He was working when he was called. He came from a family with a good position he is working or tilling uh, the lands. He's working in the family business. And there Elijah passes by and he didn't preach a big sermon, sermon to him. He just cast the mantle on him and he knew what it meant. And he asks Elijah to ask him to allow him to go and say goodbye to his father. And Elijah said, look, what do, what do I have with you? In other words, uh, Elijah was a man of few words. He didn't give many explanations. He said, look, I didn't call you, so don't come and explain anything to me or give me your excuses or whatever it may be, your plans before you follow uh, the mandate of God. Simply, uh, he says, I didn't call you. Uh, what do I have to do with you, in other words? And so it was nothing personal. It was a call from the Lord. 
And so we see here that the first that we see in the disciple who is Elisha is faithfulness. And this is the more, the most scarce thing or the most lacking thing in these last days of anarchy, of discontent. And I'm going to finish fast, uh, so I won't mention uh, too many. But in 2 Timothy chapter 3, from verses 1 to 5, Paul mentions the character of the men of the last days. So in this time, it is very difficult, uh, but I don't disregard that there are faithful people, faithful people who love the Lord, who have understood what the calling is, uh, that are willing to follow the plan of God. There is a lot of people, and the Lord is always going to have a, a small group, uh, a small congregation, or a small population. The Lord will always have a remnant, a small remnant. It's never a lot. Uh, is that the will of God? No. Uh, many are the called, but few are chosen. Chosen in the sense that they are willing to obey and to follow the plan of God. It's not that God uh, rejects people, but it's simply it's that God chose them, but they did not respond to the call. And that's why it says many are the called, but few are the chosen. Few are the ones who chose to follow the plan of God. So the first thing that we find in Elisha, which is very scarce in these last days, is faithfulness. People will look for their own plans, their own thing, it, very selfish, centered in their own plans, who will follow their own or look for their own ministry, their own comfort, their own interests, etc., etc., and I repeat to you, this is the character of the men of the last days, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And you can continue to read in those verses and on forward. So Elisha is not happy that Elijah is leaving, though he knew that he was the successor of Elijah. And he is neither going to abandon him because he's leaving already. Elisha uh, is much more faithful than the disciples of the Lord Jesus, when they knew that Jesus was going to die, you know, they were fighting amongst each other to see who was going to take his place. But on the other hand, Elisha is not happy that he's going to lose his uh, mentor, his uh, master. He has a faithful spirit. Uh, do you know that faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit? It doesn't just come. That can only come by the Spirit of God. And if you have the Spirit of God, you're filled with the Spirit, you are a faithful person. If we are not filled with the Holy Spirit, though we speak in tongues, etc., etc., but there's not that anointing of the fruits of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit, there is no faithfulness. Therefore, let's see here that though he knows, Elisha knows that he is going to be the successor. Listen, he knows uh, the other ones, uh, the disciples are fighting uh, to see who's going to be number one when the Lord Jesus leaves. Who's going to keep the leadership? But Elisha is not content. He's not happy uh, because Elijah is not going to be there any longer. Uh, to the contrary of that, he was a man who honored. He, he, faith, he practiced the law of honor. Uh, we have to see that Elijah was not a man of an easy character to deal with. He was an emotional man, but God had chosen him and he put him at the same level of Moses. Faithfulness and honor, they go hand in hand if we want to have the double anointing of God. In verse 8, it says in the scripture there where we are, now Elijah, remember that he didn't want to stay uh Elisha did not want to stay in Gilgal, Bethel, or Jericho. And so now, in verse 8, it says, Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken from you? And look at what Elisha said. Look at what he asked for. He said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. What a beautiful petition. Uh, taking the mantle, he rolled it up. And Elijah um, 
struck the waters and the Jordan divided so that they would be able to cross. Elisha, Elijah and Elisha could cross on dry ground. Now, all of this is happening with uh, witnesses. All of the sons of the prophets were there because they knew that Elijah, they knew Elijah was going to be taken away. Maybe they didn't know the details, but they said, do you know your Lord, your master is going to be taken from you, uh, from upon you? He was upon Elisha. Uh, and so uh, Elijah was upon, from upon Elisha. Do you see what leadership is? And nowadays everything gets distorted. Uh, but Elijah was in the, he walked in the ways of Moses and Joshua. And they, in the power of God, had divided the waters Moses in the Red Sea and Joshua also, he divided the Jordan as Elijah did. And now in verse 9, it says, And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? And we saw what he asked for. And we already saw what he asked for. Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So now Elijah shows that what God did in the past, God could do it nowadays. When he saw the faithfulness of his disciple, he said, ask for whatever you want. What do you want me to do before I'm taken away? Would you not love, beloved in Christ, that the Lord himself would tell you, what do you want me to do for you? What a privilege uh, that him seeing the faithfulness in this time uh, that he will say to all the faithful ones, because that is what we expect to hear from the Lord. Faithful servant, enter. How beautiful, right? What the Lord has prepared for the faithful servants. And so when he saw the faithfulness of his disciple, he said, what do you want me to do? What may I do for you, uh, for Elisha, uh, before I am taken away from you? And Elijah made this offer to Elisha until he tested the faithfulness of Elisha of not abandoning his leader and he gives him a blank piece of paper so he could ask for whatever he wants what would we ask for I don't know nowadays uh, we ask without faithfulness uh, but knowing that we have fruits of faithfulness what would we ask the Lord for what would I ask the Lord for what do you want me to do for you because You've been tested and you've been approved. Elisha said, please let a double spirit be upon me. The powerful spirit that, re that rested upon Elijah. He had seen the powerful way that the spirit would operate through Elijah. And it was the same spirit of God that operated in the prophet Elijah. Verse 10, look at what Elijah says. Now in this time... So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. A rotund no. If you see me when I am taken away. But notice what Elijah says in the beginning. He says, you have asked a hard thing. Nowadays, it is much more difficult because of the anarchy, because of the spirit of the Antichrist infiltrated inside even the church to bring division, to bring discontent, disrespect, lack of unity centered in our own ego. So see that in if in this time Elijah said you have asked for a hard thing how much more in this time now the scripture says you have asked a hard thing and look at what he tells him in verse 11 or let's continue in 10 he says so he said you have asked a hard thing nevertheless if you see me when i am taken from you it shall be so for you but if not it shall not be so so there was something here to be able to receive that double anointing it was faithfulness but there was something else do not take your eyes off your leader who is our leader who is the one that paul says that we should keep our eyes on the author and the consumer of our faith do not take your eyes off 
You want the double portion? You want the double anointing? Don't take your eyes off. Keep your eyes there. To the contrary, you will not be given the double portion. So now let's see what is going to happen. Verse 11, then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire, and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into the heaven. And so a chariot of fire with horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind, and Elisha saw it, and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. And tore, it says, and he took a hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. Why did he do that? Why did he tear his clothes? To tear his own clothing was a sign of mourning. In 2 Corinthians 7.10, Paul says, The sadness, according to God, produces repentance. But it could also have been because of gratitude, he had the mantle of Elijah was in his hand. To tear his own garment could have been a symbol of throwing out all of his own things and putting the clothing of Elijah. When Elijah called Elisha, I repeat to you, he was working out in the field. And he put, Elijah put his mantle on Elisha and he comprehended that this symbolic act was a calling to work for God. So in response to that call, he slayed the bulls. And uh, to not have the temptation to go back to his old job with a wood, he burned that wood and he cooked the bulls that he used to work uh, with. So he, they, he didn't leave the plow or the bulls or oxen, uh, to have the temptation to go back or to continue in his own duties, in his own works, in his own business, in his own things. So look at Elijah. Those of us who are called cannot walk with our oxen, depending on the gains that we might I receive from my job, uh, my knowledge, what is going to uh, get me forward in this life. If you are called, don't walk with the oxen because it's not going to go well for you. We can't. As a matter of fact, we just cannot walk with the oxen. We have to sacrifice them and we have to burn that tilling equipment. That is if we have been called. If you have been called and you reject the calling and God will leave you. Yes, it is your free will. You have the free will to choose. But I'm going to tell you one thing. You are going to be the most unhappy man or woman because there is no better place than to be serving the Lord. There is no better place. There is no greater reward. There is no greater treasure than to be servants of the Lord. But that is such a personal decision. That is a decision that we can, re we can reject to do it. Saul supposedly he did the will of God he was the king but he was always disobedient and his position was taken from him though God never took the anointing from him but he took his position from him because he called another one beloved in Christ it, it was very sad uh, the life of Saul it was a life that was a very sad truly why a man with mental problems, physical problems, emotional problems, all kinds of problems. Uh, look at what uh, disobedience hauls, what disobedience brings. Uh, no one can be in their right judgment when we do not do the will of God. And so those of us who are called, I repeat to you, we cannot walk with the oxen depending on what I can do on my own gains, on my own profits, on my own effort, because... The one who God calls, he sustains them. Let's look at this. Elijah put the mantle on the shoulders of Elisha. But Elijah walked with the mantle until his departure. Now, Elisha has him in his hands and he rents or rips his own garments 
to take the responsibility of being the successor of Elijah. If we are going to serve God, listen to this, we have to take the garment of Christ and rip the clothing garments of our past and break our habits and break or rip everything that binds us to this world. Let's remember that Bartimaeus left his cape to live under the covering of Christ. He cast his cape out and he had a vision because he was blind. He had the vision. His The vision came back to his eyes. We ought to leave behind everything that we think is valuable for us. And so it is a privilege to be called by the Lord. It is not a way of with a bed of roses. Uh, there is a cross, a heavy cross, much criticism, much of a lot of negative things because the devil is going to want to throw uh, and put a stumbling block to the called ones because he knows their potential uh, or to deviate them with what they think that is right uh, to know the word and to know uh, some something extra and to add to it. And that's a tremendous error uh, it, because the Rechabites told Jeremiah, our father taught us not to drink wine and not to have another uh, seed. Do not add another seed to the seed of the word of God. There's danger there. There's confusion. There's error. As if the word of God was not enough for all of our traumas, for all of our problems, for all of the wounds of our past, of the present, and of our future. It, it is all here in the word of God. So, no, we cannot deviate to a different seed that is not the word of God. And so what did Bartimaeus do? He left his cape. I don't need this. I don't need anything from this world. I live under the covering of Christ. And for what for us is super valuable and it's life or death and it's my future, etc., etc. Here, uh, the word of God tells us, throw that cape, that dirty cape, that filthy cape uh, of one who was begging uh, for crumbs. Let's not beg for crumbs of this world, though uh, we might uh, be outshined with the offers, but there is a glorious reward in the kingdom of heaven. There is a special crown, a very special crown for those who are called. Now, Jesus ascended to the presence of the Lord. Now, we ought to uh, take the responsibility uh, that is if we want to live under the spiritual covering of the Lord. Now it is us who represent the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. The dramatic ministry of Elijah ended with a dramatic ending, a scene with fire, the carriage, it's the chariot separated Elijah and Elisha, and he went in a um, whirlwind of fire. So he didn't go away in a chariot of fire, but in a whirlwind. And we see the images that they present to see, uh, to represent this uh, taking away of Elijah. And we see him at his, at his, as if he's going on a chariot, but the chariot is, is the, is the chariot of God, because it says that he rides upon the cherubim of fire, but he was lifted. He was taken in a whirlwind of fire. The church will be called in, uh, a cloud of glory, the cloud of his glory. That is when we finish our race. Now let's finish it victorious, doing his will. Eli Elisha certainly inherited the prophetic ministry of Elijah and the faithful ones like Elisha will inherit the double portion of the anointing. We have anointed, we have received and inherited the anointing of Jesus and eternal life from him. But only the ones who are faithful and submitted to God, the ones who will receive the double anointing, will only be the faithful ones. Elijah knew, Elisha knew, and the 50 in the school of the prophet knew that they were gonna be that he was going to be taken away. And I ask you the same question: do you know that we're gonna be taken up? I'm asking the church now. And if we do know that Christ is coming, are we waiting? Are we ready? Or are we still holding on to what this world can offer us? Are we pressing into the things of the world? Uh, or are we are we faithful to God? But if you're distracted, if we're distracted with the offers of this world, your eyes are not so much on Christ. Maybe once in a while you look up 
and especially if you have a need. If I have a need, that's when, uh, when I look up to him, help me, Lord, but there's no devotion. And I've always testified that when, uh, something about when I deviated from the ways of the Lord, uh, I have, was already called and being in the faculty of theology and it was nothing bad. It was the word of God. It was books and I was preparing myself for the ministry, but my focus was study, 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 study and get good grades. But it was no more longer watches in the night, no longer prayer, no longer congregating myself on the days of services, only on Sundays. And that's where my fall came. And it was very regrettable. It was very painful. And it has left scars on me. Beloved in Christ, we cannot keep our eyes or take our eyes off of Christ. Uh, and I could have justified myself, uh, but... Uh, word of God without prayer, without consecration, without the seeking we are walking. Uh, our train is, is or your car, you're not driving it uh, with, um, you know, the, all, all the wheels. We, we are walking or driving with only one wheel. We need to not keep our eyes off of Christ. And I tell you by experience, and maybe this can help somebody. If the Lord has called you, be faithful. Be faithful. Not everybody has that privilege. Many assure, I am called to do great things. But they called themselves because if they were truly called, they would follow the example that Elisha followed. Conclusion. We need to be conscious, as I told you, that Christ is coming soon and not keep not take our eyes off of him. Let's be faithful to Christ in service to him and not abandon him if we want the reward and the double anointing. Many begin, but not many finish. The pressures of this world strips them of their blessings in exchange for the material things. To be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and of the presence of God in our lives offers the true protection for your house, for your church, for your community, for your family, your extended family, etc. It is not your money what or my money that is going to protect your family from the attacks of satan it will not be anything that the world could offer us and to acquire and to get things that's not going to protect your family from the attacks of satan it is the double portion the double anointing it is that's what's going to protect your life moses and Elisha finished their ministry with honor. How do you and I plan to finish our race? Have you asked yourself, how are we living our days here on this earth, here in these last days, when it's when we should most press into Christ? How are you living? How am I living? Are we faithful? Elisha was faithful to Elijah in spite of the offers. Stay here, uh, a ministry. And it was Elijah who tested him. He said, stay in Gilgal. It's going to go good for you. Here's, uh, there's a school of prophets here. You're going to be a teacher. You're going to teach. You're going to do great things. You've learned from me. No, I'm not going to leave you. Stay in Bethel. You are going to be the pastor. No. Stay here in Jordan. There's another school. No. Do we honor our call by giving uh, the priorities to our call rather than our own personal? Do we honor the ministry of our leaders? Oh, but they've let me down. Yes. Do you think that Elijah uh, let Elisha down many times? I think so. But Elisha was not there because of Elijah. He was there because God had called him. And God, in, in due time, and he honored him. And in spite of this prophet being such an emotional prophet, God was faithful with Elijah. He took him in a whirlwind of fire. So who is the one who is going to sustain the leadership of your leader? You or the Lord? Let's think about that. Who is the one who is sustaining? Oh, but uh, they're wrong. And uh, you, you think that the Lord doesn't know? Earlier, I heard something about this. Do you think the Lord doesn't know when your leader is wrong? And set you as a judge? I don't know. Maybe he did set you as a judge. I don't know. But 
He's sitting on a throne and he still continues to be the judge. Our eyes should be set on up above where the Lord is. Do we want the double portion of the anointing? The double portion of the anointing only comes when there is obedience. Are we under the covering of the mantle of Christ? Have we rent our own clothing and left the clothing of this world, the cape of this world, where we refuge and, and the plans we had and where we looked for protection and we wanted a better future? Or do we have the garment, the clothing, or the cape of the Lord Jesus? Elijah says, you've asked for a difficult thing. What had Elisha asked for? The double anointing. There is a contrast with uh, the soft ascension of the Lord Jesus. He went uh, he went up to heaven very slowly until a cloud separated him from the eyesight of his disciples. The carriage of fire was the real protection for the people of God, just as the spiritual force of the presence of God. In 2 Samuel 22, 11, David has a vision of the Lord riding on a chariot of fire. That chariot of fire uh, it is God himself riding on a cherubim of fire. And those chariots of fire nowadays are all of those who as Elisha have decided or have received the double anointing. They're the protection for your church, for your family, for the community. Peoples like Elisha who never separated themselves uh, and they were always faithful towards the leadership of this emotional prophet. Elisha sees that the protection of Israel had been the prom presence of God and the prophet. When the presence of God is in you, you become that true protection for your house, for your church, for your city, etc., etc. It is the people like Elijah who are filled with that spiritual fire. Every leader is spiritual protection for the church. Notice, every member filled with his spirit is spiritual protection against the forces of the enemy. Do not destroy your home. Let's not destroy our community. Let's not destroy the church with our selfishness because you have been called. You are protection for that place. And that place, you might say possibly, well, there's a lot of sin. There's a lot of false people. There's a lot of this. There's a lot of hypocrisy. There's a lot of that. But you are the protection for that church. So what happened with you? The Lord called you to be that protection. That means that you are failing because you were called to protect through the double anointing of the Holy Spirit. It is like this that the extraordinary ministry of Elijah ends very similar to the ministry of Moses. They remained uh, alone against injustice. Look at the ministry of Moses and Elijah. They remained alone against injustices. Moses uh, went against uh, the Pharaoh. And Elijah against Ahab and his wicked wife Jezebel. They were associated with the desert. They were prepared in the desert. They knew the provision of God. For those uh, who say, oh, well, if I surrender to God and only to, uh, to do the leadership to the calling of God, so then how am I going to live? What am I going to do in the future? Well, listen, Moses in the desert ate manna for 40 years. And he, in the desert, he had water. And in the desert, he lacked nothing. And in the desert, he rejoiced in the presence of God. And what happened with Elijah? Elijah. In the desert, he didn't lack food. He had crows that fed him every day next to a brook. And it dried up when it was time for him to move on. Uh, and it was time for him to move on to a worser place. Okay? Sarepta. Where... It was the crib of Jezebel where he was going to confront so many things, uh, witchcraft and sorcery. And we say, oh, well, it goes so bad for me. Well, well, if you walk in the will of God, uh, you know, if you say it went bad for me over there, well, it's going to get worse. <laughs> so they both uh, walked in the desert 40 years, fasted 40 days. Moses in Deuteronomy 10.10 10, and Exodus 34.28 and uh, in First. They uh, fasted 40 days and they had successors who did not depart from them, who did not separate themselves. How beautiful. Those successors, uh, like Joshua, he was the successor of Moses. Elisha was the successor of Elijah. 
He never, they never departed. The scripture says in Exodus 33, 11, that it says that Joshua never left from the door of the tabernacle. And Elisha, well, in spite of all the offers that Elijah made to him to test his faithfulness, he never separated himself from him. And he received the double anointing. They had very strange deaths, or maybe they didn't die. Uh, Moses in Mount Nebo, Deuteronomy 32, 48 to 50 in the region of Jordania at, where he disappeared and Elijah in the crossing of the Jordan. Nowadays, more than ever, beloved in Christ, it is a difficult thing to find faithfulness. Not because God cannot give it, but because many of us are not willing to be faithful and obedient. Jesus said something else about the last days. He says, Will the Son of Man find faith when he comes back to the earth? The double anointing, that spirit is the spirit of obedience. May God bless every one of you. And let's remember, beloved in Christ, there is nothing, there is nothing that fulfills. Not all the treasures of this world, not all of the sciences or knowledge or wisdom of this world, there is nothing compared with to be servants of the Lord, but in the Lord's manner, the servant of servants, not in the manner of the pride and of the, oh, servants of God with arrogance. No, not like that, but the one who takes that wash basin and he guards himself and he washes the feet of the disciples. That's the true servant of God. That is why you have asked for a difficult thing. May God bless you abundantly. It's the desire of my heart. Blessings, beloved.